So I listened to about 20 minutes of um, Christoph Cox interview on um, the UCTV um, channel. Um, I'll post this as a reply to it. And um, uh, Christoph Cox and uh, Francis Crick, um, until Crick's, Crick's death, uh, they worked together on um, developing a framework in order to approach empirical study of what are called the neural correlates of consciousness. Um, you know, Koch is, is quick to point out that um, he hasn't developed uh, theories of consciousness, but frameworks for approaching the question of consciousness in a scientific way. A theory would imply um, you know, a very simple predictive uh, formula, and we don't have that yet. Science doesn't have that yet for consciousness. Um, we're just beginning to turn the scientific eye to consciousness. Now, you know, there's a major question here, of course. How can we scientifically study consciousness? Um, you know, Koch is very animate when he's um, arguing that we must study it scientifically and um, you know he feels very strongly that we can't just leave consciousness to um, new age cults to religion um, that we have to that we have to bring it into um, the scientific light um, the question is what is uh, science and what is consciousness um, you know, I've, I've just been reading uh, Edmund Husserl's The Crisis of European Sciences and Transcendental Phenomenology, and um, it's all about how to approach consciousness scientifically. Um, you know, even uh, Cox said that, um, you know, I'm paraphrasing, that consciousness is the most basic property of the world. In other words, um, you know, it, it, consciousness would be our the sense in which we are always directed toward things in the world, that, um, you know, the structure of consciousness is basically of um, an observer and thoughts. Um, and thoughts, I mean, in the most general sense, uh, in the sense in which, you know, this so-called object is for consciousness, a thought. Um, I am conscious of the book. I am conscious of the computer. That sense of consciousness is the most basic element of the world, of experience. Um, so, you know, Koch is making that phenomenological um, uh, assumption about what is most given what is most obvious about our experience. And I agree with him, and, and Husserl would agree with him. Um, then the next question is, you know, how do we then develop a framework for scientifically investigating this most basic property of experience in the world? Um, for Husserl, we have to engage this primarily in an inner or in a first-person way. Um, he's, you know, Husserl's whole criticism of what he calls the natural attitude or uh, what basically amounts to objective materialistic science, um, his criticism of it is that it has taken the world of experience and consciousness as given and then proceeded to explain it theoretically or mathematically. Um, and it's, in assuming it has explained anything, it's neglecting um, that it has already assumed so much. It has already assumed that the human mind can have knowledge of an objective world. There's a whole philosophical um, gap there that needs to be filled in, that um, no amount of empirical evidence will ever provide you with. Um, so, you know, Husserl says that 
what's happened with science in the modern world is that um, the special sciences have become so fragmented that they no longer recognize their original dependence on a universal philosophy, which for, for Husserl would be phenomenology, transcendental phenomenology. Um, the special sciences forget their dependence upon philosophy for their, for their meaning and assume that the specific facts that they generate within the very small paradigm that they have brought forth with their sort of, you know, experimental conditions, um, their practices, their assumptions, um, because they neglect their need for universal philosophy to give those findings meaning, um, those findings become isolated and um, end up conflicting with evidence in other sciences. Um, and the, the notion of a, a grand uh, unified picture of the universe based on science becomes impossible because you need a philosophical um, foundation in order to support a scientific um, worldview. So, you know, Husserl is not a critic of science. He's a critic of the particular way that science has um, sort of devolved and fragmented itself during the course of the last few hundred years. Uh, he thinks it needs to regain its original spirit, which is um, recognizing this this thing called consciousness, and um, certainly um, recognizing that because we are conscious, we can gain knowledge. Um, you know, science is about knowledge, but when it forgets its dependence on consciousness on the givenness of the world for our experience, um, then it becomes a series of abstractions whose meaning is, is obscure and impossible for, for us to understand or relate to our everyday lives. Um, you know, quantum physics is the most experimentally successful um, field of science ever. Uh, in terms of the accuracy of the predictions, the probabilistic predictions that it can make. And yet, nobody understands what it means. And for Husserl, this is a crisis. Uh, because if science no longer has meaning for us as conscious human beings, um, then it's, it's lost its way. It's forgotten its dependence upon philosophy and become mere technology, mere um, a technology of theory which means that it's a theory become so habitualized and taken for granted, um, a theorizing that becomes so taken for granted um, that it proceeds to describe the world uh, as seen from its particular narrow perspective um, while neglecting everything else. Um, and so, you know, the danger is that the science of consciousness that people like um, cock are trying to develop um, could become too narrowly specialized. Um, and it, it could theorize about consciousness habitually, just assuming that, for example, um, materialism as a metaphysical system is true, and proceeding based on that belief to find ways to reduce consciousness to neural activity. Um, you know, Koch does admit that there, there's a philosophical issue that can't be empirically really solved at this point, which is whether the neural correlate of consciousness, of a conscious experience, is just that a correlate or an actual cause, that the brain state, the physical brain state, um, is, is um, identical to the conscious state and um, the cause of the conscious state. Uh, you know, Koch didn't so, at least so far, I haven't finished the whole interview, he seemed to be um, you know, distance, distancing himself as a neuroscientist from the need to answer that philosophical question. Um, you know, I as a philosopher or as someone taking a more philosophical uh, position or me as someone who has more of a philosophical stake in the question of consciousness, um, I tend to think that Studying the brain will only give you the correlate of a conscious experience. Um, 
and as far as cause 